Super Shakalaka, today's video, I am answering an oft asked question. What's my thoughts on NFTs? And also, in this episode, I'm going to be sharing what I think is the best use case for NFTs. And at the very end, my two favorite NFT platforms. So if you want to find out exactly what they are, stay tuned. What's up everyone, Randall here from Crypto Love. Today we're talking about NFTs, everybody's favorite topic, Poke Cards of Crypto. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna go over exactly what I think about NFTs, what I think the best use case for NFTs is, and what the two best NFT platforms are to invest in. Before we do guys, make sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell. Also, come join us over on Twitter at the Crypto Love for some exclusive giveaways. Now, I should say, you know, before I go bashing NFTs or whatever I'm going to do in this episode, I should let you know that I have created some NFTs, thrown my hat in the ring. Like this one was a collaboration with NFT art artist Kid Kodo. So, have created some NFTs. Do have some NFTs for sale, but. A lot of people are asking me, what are my thoughts on NFTs? And I wanted to share them with you. I think this meme right here basically sums it up best. Is that we have like two cars on this highway, people buying NFTs, and we have a thousand on this, people selling NFTs. I don't think that people are buying NFTs because they actually want the garbage. They're buying them because they want to sell them later at a higher price. You know, there could be some people who are collectors, and there likely are some people who are NFT collectors who actually want this. But for the most part, I think people are doing it very much as a speculative asset. Similar to ICOs of 2017, we have NFTs of 2021, and people are seeing that you can make a lot of money in this, so they're like, hey, I better buy it now and sell it. And I think this is the main thing behind NFTs. Now. I want to share with you what Charlie Lee has said because I think he has his finger on the pulse of NFTs. He says an NFT is a digital certificate to a collectible that can be easily, cheaply, and perfectly duplicated. Imagine if we had the technology that can perfectly clone a piece of artwork to the last detail where it's indistinguishable to the original even by experts. Then we can duplicate, for example, the Mona Lisa, and every person can hang a perfect replica of the Mona Lisa on a wall at home. That reduces the value of the original Mona Lisa because no one can prove that it's the original. But what if there's a certificate of authenticity? Let's say it's signed by Leonardo da Vinci himself, and this certificate cannot be duplicated or even counterfeited, unlike the artwork. That's the NFT. How much is this NFT or certificate of authenticity actually worth? Well, he says it's actually, it's definitely worth something, but the full value of the Mona Lisa transferred to this certificate? I argue definitely not. If everyone can have an exact duplicate of the Mona Lisa hanging on their walls, most wouldn't care much to own the certificate of authenticity. Part of the value of owning collectible is the prestige to be able to say, I own it and can display the collectible, and no one else in the world can do that. NFT reduces the value to only I own and can display the certificate of authenticity. The majority of the value of owning collectible is lost by switching the ownership from the actual collectible to its certificate of authenticity. That's basically what NBA Top Shot NFTs are. They're digital certificates to a short video moment that anyone can download. It's true that with NBA Top Shot, you can point to an nbatopshot.com URL and be proud to, to look it and say, I own this moment. This wears off pretty quickly, though. The value of NFT actually comes from the NBA brand and not the tokens themselves. Without the NBA's continuing backing of Top Shot, the NFTs themselves are not worth anything. For example, what happens to the value of the Top Shot NFTs if the website nbatopshot.com goes down? The link between the digital certificate and the artwork is now broken. This is different from traditional baseball cards. The manufacturer or even the league can cease to exist, but the physical card can still retain their value. For example, the brand Fleer no longer exists, but the 1986 Fleer Michael Jordan rookie card is still worth about $500,000 today. He'll end this thread with the image he found on Reddit. It's funny because it's true. What's the value of an NFT of a song when everyone in the world can own the actual song for a dollar? And in this, they say, they don't know I own this song's non-fungible token. And that, I think he makes a good point here that these NFTs that people are buying are really worthless. And it, really, it's a lot of what went on here. I see it very similar to when we went from books in print to digital books. All of a sudden, you know, before then, you had to actually 
write a book and then get a publisher and then get it printed and ship those. Okay, then it changed to we had ebooks, and all of a sudden you could create infinite ebooks and sell infinite ebooks for zero cost. And that's basically what's happening with NFTs right now. However, I won't be all negative on NFTs because I do think there is a brilliant use case for NFTs. And I just saw this on Twitter that I wanted to share with you, especially all of you ladies out there. This one right here, an absolute game changer for both women and NFTs. Hey ladies, if a guy sends you an unsolicited dick pic, turn it into an NFT with his name as the artist and then share it with him the link to purchase. He will have to buy it from you if he wants to burn it and get it off the blockchain. That is brilliant for all the ladies who get unsolicited dick pics. You can all of a sudden turn them into NFTs and then fuck those guys over. That's awesome. So I think that is really probably the best case for NFTs. Everything else, eh. But we'll kind of have to see how it turns out. I've been wrong before and it could happen again. I mean, who knows? This could be the thing that saves crypto. I don't think so, but it might be. Now, that being said, I think there still is a lot of money to be made with NFTs. Does this come from buying the NFTs themselves and then hoping to resell them? I don't think so. I think more likely buying NFT platforms that are very worthwhile and then when the, when the value of those go up, sell that. And as you guys know, Chili's went up 180x. And this is one that I was predicting for quite a while thanks to token metrics. Well, I have two other predictions for NFT marketplaces that potentially could do very well based on token metrics predictions. And if you want to check out token metrics, I'll put a link to it down in the pinned comment. You could check it out. So the first one is actually from the token metrics team. They're the people who got me turned on to Matic back when it was like a cent. Okay, before 50 x Well, their favorite NFT project right now is Flow. All right, if we take a look at Flow right now, it's ranked about 87th on coin market cap. It's at $34 down from its all time high of $41 in the past month. And as we can see, the price is just progressively going up. We haven't had like a moonshot yet of Flow, but this is something that could potentially happen. And Flow can be found on a lot of different markets out there. We have Huobi, Kraken, Coinless gate, but notice it's not on Coinbase yet. It's not on Binance yet. So this one, when it does open up, we'll be seeing it on probably the price go up dramatically. Now the next one would be Coco's BCX. Now this one is one that does show up repeatedly on token metrics. And this is the same type of thing that happened with Chili's before it went up 180X. Chili's was showing up all over token metrics. And I was like, what is this? Why do they even want that? So Coco's BCX is an NFT marketplace, as we can see here, and right now it's way down there. This is a very speculative one, ranked 490th on coin market cap, down to 156 from a high of 185, and the price has been steadily increasing. But if we take a look at the markets, it's on Binance, it's on Gate.io, it's on MXC, the overall volume about 10 million per day on Binance. So this is one that could be more readily available than Flow, but I just wanted to bring this one up because it keeps flashing up top similar to what Chili's did before that went up 180X. So guys, I hope you did enjoy that episode. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and I will catch you later. Peace.